Welcome to Easy Alim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be looking at the topic nitrogen and its compounds and our subtopic for today is nitrogen 4 oxide. So we have already looked at nitrogen gas and the oxides nitrogen 1 oxide and nitrogen 2 oxide and today we are cumulatively adding with nitrogen 4 oxide. So we will look at the laboratory preparation and then also some chemical and physical properties and then you get a chance to practice on a few questions. So nitrogen 4 oxide as you can see from the name. So when you look at the formula for writing nitrogen 4 oxide, so nitrogen valency is 4 from the bracket and oxygen valency is 2. So by 2 1 by 2 2 so you crisscross you get NO2. It's usually prepared by reacting concentrated nitric acid with copper tannins. Can notice the similarities between the preparation of nitrogen 2 oxide and the preparation of nitrogen 4 oxide. In the preparation of nitrogen 2 oxide, we used 50% concentrated nitric acid. In this case, you are using completely concentrated nitric 5 acid. So when concentrated nitric 5 acid is added to copper, a vigorous reaction takes place and red fumes of nitrogen 4 oxide are evolved. So you notice like there is a effervescence happening, that is one of the observations. And then also brown fumes are formed. Remember nitrogen 4 oxide, we don't want to collect it over water because of its solubility. So that's the reason why we collect it by downward delivery. This tells us that it is heavier. So that is the equation. So copper reacts with nitric acid to form copper nitrate plus nitrogen 4 oxide plus water and then some of the physical properties of nitrogen 4 oxide are that it's a reddish brown gas with an irritating pungent smell you notice the irritant is because of its reaction with moisture if you remember we have moisture in our nose strings so nitrogen 4 oxide will react with that moisture to form an acid that causes us to feel that irritant. The gas is usually poisonous and of course again because of its formation of acids when it reacts with moisture and it's denser than air so it's collected through downward delivery. Another way of producing nitrogen oxide is the action of heat on nitrates and especially of heavy metals like lead 2 nitrate. So we, di we discussed this in form 2 when we were looking on action of heat on nitrate. So when you heat, for example, lead 2 nitrate, you're going to produce a nitrogen 4 oxide as one of the products. Nitrogen 4 oxide is given off together with oxygen when the nitrate of heavy metal are heated. So it is prepared by heating the two nitrate in a hard test tube, as you can see from the diagram. So the two nitrate is preferred because it does not have water of crystallization. So you can imagine when you are heating this reaction and there is water that is being produced, it's definitely going to react with nitrogen for oxide that is produced and then you are not going to get what you want at the end of the day. It would interfere with nitrogen four oxide produced because it is soluble in water. The gas is uh, passed through a U tube immersed in an ice salt mixture. This means that the gas that we are collecting, which is the nitrogen four oxide, we do not we do not collect it by over water. Definitely, we know it's going to dissolve in the water, so we have to look for another way of collecting it, and that is done by cooling it. And when it cools, it forms uh, a solution, a yellow solution, and you're going to discuss it in a minute. So lead nitrate is heated to produce lead oxide plus nitrogen for oxide and oxygen gas is given off. So one, some of the observations you notice is that the white lead to nitrate crystals would decompose or um, decrepitate. Decre and there's a cracking sound that is hard and it causes the formation of a red or uh, orange lead to oxide which usually turns yellow on cooling so it is important you note those colors because those are the observations you are asked when you are this question is tested 
and colorless gas is also given off and this colorless gas is oxygen it is usually liberated and um and then also followed by some brown fumes of nitrogen four oxide nitrogen four oxide is condensed as a yellow liquid so it condenses to form a liquid called dinitrogen tetraoxide you can see dinitrogen dinitrogen means that we have two atoms of nitrogen and tetraoxide the tetra is because there are four so all four atoms of oxygen in the youtube so at room temperature, the nitrogen oxide consists of nitrogen oxide and the nitrogen tetraoxide, and they're usually at equilibrium with each other. So some of the properties of nitrogen oxide is uh, it's a red-brown gas with a pungent uh, choking smell. It is extremely poisonous because of its acidity. It's acidic and turns moist red litmus paper red, and the blue moist blue litmus paper also will turn red the red moist litmus paper will remain red when reacted with water the brown foams dissolves uh, so showing that it's really soluble in water that's why we never collect it by our water method so when it dissolves it forms two acids we have the nitric 5 acid and nitric 3 acid which we call the nitrous acid so like Carbonic acid, nitric 3 acid, cannot be isolated, so it's easily oxidized to nitric 5 acid. And then um, that is what happens. Remember, we are going to repeat this step again when we come to large scale production of nitric acid. We're still going to talk about this nitrous acid. So, some of the chemical properties is that hydrogen four oxide can react with magnesium. You remember we talked about nitrogen uh, magnesium reacting with nitrogen 2 oxide and also nitrogen 1 oxide so nitrogen 4 oxide does not support combustion but burning magnesium continues to burn in it uh, because um, the high heat of combustion of burning magnesium decomposes the nitrogen 4 oxide to nitrogen on oxygen this is the same thing that happened also when magnesium was reacting with nitrogen 2 and nitrogen one oxide the oxygen then supports the burning of the magnesium so generally nitrogen oxide oxidizes hot metals and metals to oxides and itself is reduced to nitrogen gas which is similar to nitrogen two oxide so magnesium will react to nitrogen four oxide to form oxide magnesium oxide and nitrogen copper will react with nitrogen four oxide to form copper oxide and nitrogen Phosphorus will react with nitrogen four oxide to form phosphorus five oxide plus uh, nitrogen gas and sulfur will react with nitrogen four oxide to form sulfur four oxide and nitrogen gas. It also reacts with alkalis, you know it is acidic in nature. So when a solution of aqueous sodium hydroxide is added to a jar containing nitrogen four oxide, the brown fumes will definitely disappear. This is because of the formation of two salts, which is sodium nitrate and sodium nitrite. It's important to remember it's just it's two salts that are produced, not just one. So sodium hydroxide plus nitrogen four oxide forms uh, sodium nitrate and sodium nitrite and water. When you write the ionic equation, this is how the ionic equation is. We wrote ionic equations in uh when we are discussing the mold, so you can go back and check that out. So one of the uses of nitrogen four oxide is used in the manufacture of the G5 acid. Let's study one question and come to an end of this discussion. The diagram below shows a setup of apparatus that can be used to prepare nitrogen four oxide. Study it and answer it to use the question. Study it and use it to answer the questions that follow. So you can see this is the second method. So we heat lead to nitrate in a boiling tube to produce liquid B and gas A. So the first question is write the equation taking place in the boiling tube. So we said it's lead nitrate. Remember to heat, put the heat side to form lead oxide, which is uh, red, then turns yellow plus nitrogen four oxide plus oxygen gas. 
So we balance this equation, uh, which is going to be, if we put a two here, then we have a put a two here. So you can see our nitrogens are more, our oxygens are not yet balanced as well. So if we put a four here, that means you have eight oxygens uh, plus two plus two. Uh, so eight plus four, 12, and this is six times two, 12. So it is balanced. Uh, and let's, let's just delete that. The next question is state the observation made in the boiling tube. So we said uh, that the lead two nitrates, which is white. So white lead two nitrate turns red, then yellow because of formation. of lead oxide so that's some of the observations you notice and then explain why two nitrates is preferred over metal nitrate in the experiment we said it's preferred because it does not have water of crystallization This, remember, this water of crystallization will react with the nitrogen 4 oxide to form the acid. So because nitric, uh, lead 2 nitrate does not have it, it means the nitrogen 4 oxide uh, is going to be produced as it's possible to. And then describe how gas A can be identified. So remember, gas A is oxygen gas. It can be identified by introducing uh glowing splint which relies and then name liquid b liquid b is water it's a chemical equation to show how liquid b is formed in the experiment uh, liquid b is not water <laughs> It's going to be the nitrogen tetraoxide, so like that. So show how liquid B is formed. So we said is nitrogen four oxide. So we show the equilibrium to N two. So this is two. This is the gas. Remember, this is cooling. This is the liquid. That's how it forms. Write an ionic equation for the reaction that takes place when nitrogen oxide reacts with aqueous sodium hydroxide. So we know there is a sodium hydroxide reacts with nitrogen oxide to form sodium nitrate plus sodium nitrite plus water. So H2O. So if you balance this equation, you can see we have two sodium, so we have to put a two here. And we have two nitrogen, so we put a two here, we balance this equation. So it's going to be two OH ions. Mm, this is our gas. To form two nitrate nitrogen oxide gas form uh, nitrate ions plus nitrite ions and water. That is going to be the ionic equation. You notice that sodium ions are going to be removed because in both sides they are aqueous in nature. So that brings us to the end of nitrogen oxide. So in the next lesson, you are going to be focusing on ammonia, how it's prepared and some of the properties of ammonia. So see you in the next lesson.